Hello and happy midweek, everyone. It's Gim Hong here again to share another trade idea with you guys. Okay. Without further ado, let's jump in straight to the trade idea. Okay. Pound cap, UK inflation at nine year high. So um, I think it's an hour ago, an hour plus ago, that the um, UK Office of National Statistics release the annual UK inflation data, okay? Um, I think it was 3.2%, um, okay? As you can see here, um, it's actually a nine-year high level, okay? So let me show you the graph of the, the data, okay? So as you can see over here, the actual is, oops, the actual figure is 3.2, okay, for August. Um, as opposed to the forecast of 2.9%. Now, when was the last time it actually hit that high? Okay, if you can see the horizontal line, it goes, ah, it goes all the way back to here. The last time it was that high was like 3.5% back in 2020, 2012, okay, 2020, 2012, okay, April 17, uh, April, yeah, April 17, okay. So that was like some nine years and few months um, ago, okay, that inflation actually hit that high, all right? So um, yes, because of this, you know, um, we actually see a brief strengthening in the pound against the Canadian dollar, okay? So um, apart from being the nine-year high, above the nine-year high level, okay, um, the Office of National Statistics, okay, actually mentioned that um, the reason why inflation in the UK, okay, um, rose strongly in August was because of the eat out to help out scheme, okay. This was actually a scheme, um, I think it was actually a scheme to actually encourage um, people in the UK to actually dine in in the restaurants, okay? Because um, remember that um, back in 2020, uh, this scheme was actually implemented last year, all right? So back in 2020, when COVID hits, you know, um, restaurants were forced to close down. Um, okay, maybe not close down, okay? Continue operation, but only allow um, people to do takeaways, right? To do takeouts. Um, no dining was, uh, no dining in was allowed. Okay, so once it actually opens up, um, you know, there are still people who are like more cautious, you know, trying to take things slow and not dining in, all right? So in order to encourage the, the UK people, okay, people in the UK to actually um, dine in um, in these restaurants, okay, um, the government, the UK government actually came up with this eat out to help out scheme to, yeah, basically to just encourage um, um people to dine in, all right? So at that time when this scheme was implemented, um, I'm not exactly sure about the mechanics behind this scheme, okay? But um, one thing for sure is that the price of meals, okay, dining meals were, were, was actually, um, you know, prices were actually being, um, how, how, how do I put it? Was actually brought down, all right? It was way cheaper than pre-pandemic levels, okay? prices, meals prices, okay, meal prices were, were actually um, way cheaper than pre-pandemic levels, all right? So, you see, um, when this scheme was actually implemented, prices was prices were being pushed down, all right? Then, as time passes, as the situation gets better, COVID situation gets better, um, prices will start to recover, right? Now, remember, this scheme actually pushes prices way below the pre-pandemic levels, right? Prices before the um, COVID-19 hits. Um, so when it recovers, okay, this actually gives food prices, meal prices, um, a, a way bigger, how do I put it? A way bigger um, space to actually recover, right? I mean, like, for example, okay, pre-pandemic level, um, prices were probably like at this level, okay? Then because of the implementation of the eat out to help out scheme, prices were being pushed down, all right? Now that, um, you know, COVID, now that vaccination program is being, um, you know, carried out 
efficiently, you know, a majority of the population is are being vaccinated and, you know, the containment of the virus is getting better as compared to last year when, you know, no vaccines were available yet, all right, prices starts to recover. Now, as it recovers, remember, if it exceeds, if the recovery actually exceeds the pre-pandemic level, you know, this actually gives a very strong, um, I would say, a recovery gap over here, right? Okay, so if let's say price were to maintain, okay, without this eat out to help out scheme, price would start off at um, pre-pandemic level, okay? And, you know, as um, demand comes in, comes in and things like that, prices may rise a bit, okay? So the rise would just be this small um, portion over here. Now, however, that wasn't the case, right? Because of the eat out and help out scheme, prices actually don't start at pre-pandemic level. Prices, you know, start off at a way lower level, okay? And when it recovers past, um, past the pre-pandemic level, this gives a very big gap of recovery over here, which explains why, um, the, which explains why we are look, we are seeing a strong inflation, annual inflation in August. Okay, so um, that is according to the Office of National Statistics. All right, um, but nonetheless, it's good that we are seeing um, inflation um, rising fast enough. I would say okay in the UK. Okay, as that will actually have an impact on the upcoming Bank of England monetary policy meeting. Okay, okay, but that is another. But that's for another time, all right? Back to the trade idea, okay? So with this piece of good news, um, yeah, like I mentioned earlier, the British pound actually strengthened briefly, okay? Not too much of a strength, but, you know, briefly, okay? Against the Canadian dollar. Then um, from the chart, okay, actually, I will just go straight over to the chart over here, all right? So as we can see that this is a H4 chart, H4 time frame. okay? Um, there is actually an ascending triangle over here, right? So I think there was, there was some like, yeah, 130, 140 pips of range for the month of August, from August to, yeah, mid-August, I would say. So there's like, I think some two, two weeks of range before we start to see that pound cat broke above this range, all right? Okay, let me just draw it out so you guys can see it clearly. So we actually see this range over here, right? So, um, you know, it took about two weeks, I would say, right? Before price actually broke above this range, okay? And yeah, as it, you know, broke above this range, um, prices, for some reason, couldn't break above this one point, around this 1.7, five, six level, okay? And then come back down. And then as you can see, the low, the higher low, okay? This low over here, okay? And then this low over here is higher than the previous low, so on and so forth. As you can see, there's an upwards sloping. So this pattern is actually called the ascending triangle pattern, right? So with this pattern, um, I'm actually expecting um, pound cat to break um, further higher, okay? So the ascending triangle is actually a continuation pattern, right? So previously there was um, an uptrend over here, okay? But then it's kind of like stalled and formed this ascending triangle pattern. And then right now I'm actually waiting for it to um, break above this ascending triangle before looking for a buy order, all right? So um, my buy order, okay, my buy stop level is at 1.763, okay? As indicated, by this green dotted line over here. Okay, that's, a, that's an important point that I have to mention over here. Um, visually speaking, all right, visually speaking, um, this level, this entry level is quite high, all right, above this, um, the top of the ascending triangle, right? It's some 60 pips away, okay? Apart from this trade, apart from this trade idea being a, um, uh, a longer term, a swing, trade kind of a trade idea, all right? Longer term trade idea. Um, I have to mention that this is actually a safe level, okay? I'm being conservative here. I'm being, I'm trying to play a bit more cautious over here. Let me show you what I mean by that, all right? Now, what you're looking at right now is the daily time frame, okay? As you can see, this level over here, 
you see there actually there's been like several tests i would say you know there's one test over here okay and it fails to break above come back down go for, come down further there's another test over here wow this is close and this comes close as well so you know one two three four and right now we are actually once again back to this level again all right so which is why um this being the fifth test okay of this um level over here um which is why i'm actually setting my entry level higher up okay um than the the usual you know close to this top of the ascending triangle level all right so um that is for people who are more who wants to take it more conservatively all right now what happens if you um if you are more of a risk taker okay let me let me just show you this all right let me bring my lines everything back let's go back to h4 all right now if you want to you know if you if you feel that um you know waiting for 60 70 pips is too long all right you want to look for a buy trade short term opportunity okay and just profit off smaller amounts smaller number of pips and close your trade then you can actually place um a stock order maybe around here okay um i will look at 1.758 1.758 okay we'll look at this level so you see as indicated by this dotted line let me change the color to yellow all right hope you guys can see this um yeah i think it's not a good idea to zoom in all right so um this green uh this green this yellow line over here all right indicates 1.758 level all right so if you guys are more um of a risk taker you know you don't want to wait for like 60 pips you know at the 1.763 level before taking up this trade idea well you guys can you know try for once 1 1.758 okay so once it breaks and touches this level the buy stop level will be a uh, buy stop entry will be triggered okay and where should your potential profit be okay where okay more importantly where should you place your stop loss now if you were to set your buy stop at 1.758 then your stop loss will probably be around like below this um, top of the ascending triangle depending on how aggressive you want to be right if you want to set your stop loss just below this um, the top of the ascending triangle, it will probably be around 30, 30 to 40 pips, okay? 30 to 40 pips. Now, if you want to be, I would say, more safe, okay, then you can go below this, um, this slope over here, all right? While well, you're looking at maybe, maybe like 70, 60, 70 pips, okay? Which is quite a lot, okay? Um, not a very good risk reward, personally, if you ask me, okay? Because if you were to, um set it at say 40 pips okay 40 pips stop over here okay now where should your potential um take profit level be all right you'll probably be around the entry level you know that i'm setting up for the conservative people of that right which is around the 1.763 level and that will be around 40 46 pips maybe 50 50 pips at most okay um yeah so um uh, not recommended to set your tp at like 70 80 pips you know just to make some potential 40 50 pips okay so if you want to be aggressive you know you can actually consider setting your stop loss around 30 to 40 pips and setting your tp to yeah 40 to 50 pips okay because we are not we're not sure if price is going to break above this level this this um this purple region over here right because like I've said, it's been tested like four times already, right? And it's coming for the fifth right now. So those are the um, levels for those who are more um, aggressive, okay? So if you are more um, conservative, you know, you want to make sure that price breaks above that 
level that has been tested four times but has not been broken up yet okay before taking up that trade then um, my suggested level is 1.763 okay then at 1.763 our TP, our stop loss, okay, our stop loss, well, I'll probably set below like 110, 100, 220 pips, okay, 120 pips or so. And then my potential take profit level will be 230, maybe 240 even, okay, that is more, I would say, decent uh, risk reward um, ratio, one is to two, okay, you risk. Um, one and you get two, you raise 120 pips to make 100, to make 240 pips, okay? So um, yeah, that's the trade idea that I have to share today, okay? So um, Traders Club members out there, um, yeah, if this trade idea were to trigger, were to realize, okay, um, I will inform you guys again in the club, all right? So, um, okay, regarding this trade idea, actually, you know what? I I think I may have missed out something, all right? Let me share my screen again. So um, take note that the there will be this, yes, 15 of September, Canadian CPI month on month data release at 2030 GMT plus eight, okay? Um, we have already heard from the UK, okay? Um, a pretty good figure printed for um, the CPI data, right? We will be hearing from the Canadian CPI data next. The um, I think it's the Office of Statistics or something like that. Okay, so um, the Canadian CPI data okay is actually expected to perform um, worse than last month. Okay, if I'm not wrong, they are actually forecasting a zero point one percent increase in inflation for the month of August, okay, as compared to the previous inflation level of um, 0.6% in July, okay? So um, not very nice over there, okay? If let's say the um, release data were to perform as expected or even worse than expected, okay? Now, keep in mind that because there was this whole spike in cases due to the Delta variant, okay, in Canada, um, yeah, which explains the um, poor expectation, poor forecast, okay, on the um, inflation data coming out from Canada, okay? So if the data were to turn out worse than expected, then it is, it is possible, okay, that we will be seeing a weakening in the Canadian dollar. So with the Canadian dollar weakening, okay, pound cap may actually strengthen, right? In return, pound cap will strengthen. So if it strengthens and break above the um, the top of the top level of the ascending triangle, right? Then the top level over here, right? Then you know there's buying opportunities for pound cap. Okay. So yeah, I think the most um the next immediate major news to pay attention to is the um Canadian CPI data release at two zero three zero later on today. Okay. So um, yeah, that's all I have to share with you guys today. All right, um, until next time, okay? Take care for now, bye-bye.